I'm Matthew Drudd, Executive Director of the Blue and Cultural Advisory Group, and it's the new season in Chelsea. Today we're going to look at some shows, some of which were postponed by Hurricane Sandy. This is an exhibition of work by Giorgio Griffa, a painter from Torino, Italy, who first came to prominence in the 1960s. It's a four-decade survey of his work. It's his first show in New York since 1973 and his first solo show in the United States since 1970. So it's a really great historical exhibition and an opportunity to introduce and reintroduce his work to American audiences. Griffa's work is challenging to contextualize insofar as while he came to prominence at the same time that Arte Povera was emerging in Italy, and he talks about his work in terms that are similar to Arte Povera artists. His concerns are much more formal and historical. He works in a very intuitive nature, using the material to kind of guide him. The pigment and the, the canvas guide him through the composition. He doesn't make paintings of things, he makes paintings about painting. Sometimes he's referencing other works of art and he talks a lot about memory and how memory inscribes itself in his work, either through the memory of another work by another artist or of an event that he's working with in the canvas. This is an exhibition of work by British artist David Shrigley. It's his fifth solo exhibition with Anton Kern Gallery. It's entitled Signs. Shrigley's work deals with semiotics and language and the relationship between what one sees and what one calls it. He works in books, drawings, objects, paintings, and this exhibition refers to signage and the imagery that we associate with both the language in a sign uh, and the form that it carries. In describing his work, one would think it's dry and conceptual, and it does have a very kind of rigorous intellectual depth to it, but Shrigley is a humorist. The work can't help but make you laugh. Uh, some of it is satirical, ludicrous, funny. Sometimes they come off as one-liners, and other times what seems like a one-liner actually has a lot of depth to it. What I love about his work is that it continues to unpack itself the more you find your way into it. This is an exhibition of work by Belgian painter Luc Toymans. It's his 10th solo exhibition at David Zorner Gallery and celebrates 20 years of their working relationship together. Toymans' work has dealt with everything from Belgian's colonial political history to the exegesis of political corporate power, mining subjects from the news, from political events, uh, from political history. This exhibition breaks with that pattern of uh, drawing from political events and deals in a more autobiographical way. They deal with the locale around which uh, Toyman lives and works. And it also uncharacteristically uh, includes a self-portrait of the artist, which is something that uh, we haven't seen before. But they still retain this character of having been based somehow on a photograph. Toyman's work is often very abstract in character, even though it portrays something from the real world. As in the painting behind me, which at first glance looks like an abstract composition, it's actually a rendering of a broken pane of glass in a window. And that duality between abstraction and realism is something that Toyman's work walks the line between very carefully and delicately. Mm -hmm.